This week at Starbase, while work continues for the new Gigabay, the launch mount at Pad B receives its hold down clamps, cleanup and inspections continue at the Massey Outpost, and the ship stand is mysteriously relocated to the launch site? Could SpaceX be planning on testing starships at the launch site, or is there some other reason for the stand's presence there? Well, let's dig into this week's update and find out. Starting off with our weekly build site construction updates, on Friday morning, workers were seen up near the office roof removing sections of cladding along the parapet above the building's windows for unknown reasons. Over at the Gigabay site, an SPMT loaded with counterweights arrived and was parked next to a crane. The crane then proceeded to unload the weights and place them on a crane mat around the site, apparently testing the weight-bearing capacity of the soil in preparation for the construction of the Gigabay. By the next day, the weights were put back on the SPMT and taken back out of the site. Meanwhile, work continued around the area as workers laid a geotextile barrier on the ground. Early on Tuesday, a concrete pump truck was observed working in the right front corner of Mega Bay 2, with the second pour flowing two days later. It's not immediately clear what work is being done in the building. Down at the launch complex, crews continue to add cladding to the lower levels of the Pad B launch and catch tower to help harden the structure for repeated launch and recovery operations. Another new cross-brace vaporizer was also installed in the tank farm on Monday. The next day, two small vaporizers were spotted being transported away from the site. On Tuesday, crews were busy installing a vapor barrier on the ground at the D2 gate as work continues to reconfigure the launch site entrance around the footprint of the expanded tank farm. And throughout the week, a total of 15 more hold-down clamp arms for the Pad B launch mount were delivered to the pad. By the end of the week, all 20 of these arms had been installed around the inner face of the mount where they will extend out to hold the booster in place during testing and launch preparations. On Wednesday, a large section of the shielding for the new mount's liquid oxygen booster quick disconnect was lifted by a crane for installation. Late that night, a second section followed and was maneuvered into position. Switching over to transport and testing activities, on Saturday morning, an empty ship transport stand was moved to the launch complex. With no ship currently at the pad, the latest speculation is that SpaceX is going to use the stand to create a makeshift ship interface on the Pad A launch mount in order to static fire Ship 37 to avoid having to wait on repairs at the Massey Outpost for the next launch. On Tuesday evening, the tank farm at the launch site was spooled up and heavy venting was visible from the farm over to Pad A. This is likely SpaceX testing and commissioning the new work that's been completed since the last launch. The testing continued for a few hours before winding down. The next evening, venting was seen again as SpaceX performed additional testing. Late on Thursday morning, a hot staging adapter was moved back out of Mega Bay 1. It's not clear what happened during its stay inside the building or why it was once again being taken back to the Star Factory building. At the Massey Outpost on Friday, some venting was seen coming from the site's liquid nitrogen tank farm, the first activity from any of the Massey farms since Ship 36's rapid unscheduled disassembly. This was likely just some testing to check out how well the farm held up during the incident. Over the weekend, crews were observed performing inspections and working to clear debris around the site as cleanup continues ahead of repairs and upgrades in the coming months. Moving on to new arrivals for the week, on Tuesday, an interesting delivery was spotted rolling into the launch complex. What do you think this hardware is for? Let us know what you think in the comments below. In other space news, on Sunday, United Launch Alliance's CEO, Tori Bruno, shared a photo of the ongoing construction of their second mobile launch platform for the Vulcan rocket as the company works to ramp up the launch cadence of their new rocket. Tori was apparently in a sharing mood, as the next day he showed off a photo of the new off-vehicle integration cell in the company's Amazon Vertical Integration Facility. This cell will allow for work to be performed on the Centaur 5 upper stage while the Vulcan booster is being readied at the same time. Gilmore Space has once again postponed the inaugural launch of their Eris-1 rocket. The company announced on Wednesday that the first orbital rocket from Australia will not fly before mid-July as they work to secure a new launch window. Switching to Florida on Friday, Booster 1080 and the fairing halves from the Starlink Group 10-16 mission returned to Port Canaveral where they were offloaded, processed, and sent back to Hangar X for refurbishment. 
Early on Saturday, Booster 1092 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 on its fifth mission as it sent another 27 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. Over the next few days, the booster and both the recovered fairing halves were returned to port for processing. On Tuesday morning, Booster 1085 was rolled out of the Horizontal Integration Facility and up to the pad at Launch Complex 39A, where it was raised vertical. Late that afternoon, the rocket lifted off for the MTGS-1 and Sentinel-4A mission, sending a new weather satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Early on Wednesday morning, Space Launch Complex 40 saw its second launch of the week as the Starlink Group 10-25 mission took off on Falcon 9 Booster 1067 for its unbelievable record-setting 29th launch. And later on Tuesday, what appears to be the cable chain for the Launch Complex 39A chopsticks was lifted and installed on the pad's Starship launch and catch tower. Meanwhile, over at the park site next to NASA's Vehicle Assembly Building, the 10th and final prefabricated module was lifted for installation on Mobile Launcher 2. This structural topping off brings the SLS Block 1B and Block 2 launcher one step closer to completion. On Thursday, crews were spotted removing the fairing support band and installing the Dragon support arm onto the transporter erector at Launch Complex 39A. This is part of the switchover operation SpaceX will be performing at the pad in preparation for the upcoming Crew-11 mission currently expected to launch at the end of this month. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.